Peter Light is with you. Stock Market Cycles Update for the week ending Friday, July 17th, being recorded on Sunday, July 19th. This is exciting. This is very exciting. And I hope to excite all of you equally as much as I am excited. And here's why. We've been doing these updates now on a, almost a daily basis for almost a year. We started out doing them strictly as YouTubes, and from that point on, we graduated on of within the past couple of months to our own specialized stock market cycles updates that we do for subscribers only. And we've told YouTube people that we would st still do uh, maybe one every week or two, three or four a month for the YouTubers that follow it that aren't interested in subscribing. So, from the very beginning, when we started giving projections, the number one question was, so, okay, th yeah, that's like magic, sure, sure, we understand. You put a box up there, that's where we're going, and whatever. W what are your statistics? Now, the quick answer to that is I had a subscriber when I was writing my newsletter, this is 20, 25 years ago, that kept track of projections for a couple of years, short-term ones, intermediate-term ones, and he told me that he showed me the individual offsets and projections, and they usually range between 60-65% on the low side and maybe 70 to high 70s on the high side, which is really good to have that kind of uh, successful projections. But the real test, of course, comes from asking the computer to follow every single projection, which ones are confirmed, of those confirmed ones, which ones have been satisfied, okay? So now, our master programmer, Stefan, has done that. We can now tell you what the success record is. You want to know? Okay, this chart that I have on here now, since the end of May, May 26th or 27th, has said that this has been an upside projection. 3503.10, 3793.81. Well, here we are almost three months later. And we're still looking at that upside projection, okay? So what percentage of the offsets that were at this level, which is 48.4 to 55.3, what percentage of those offsets have been reached once a projection is confirmed? And the second question is, over how long a period are you checking, okay? So let's do it in stages. This chart goes back 10 years. It kept track of every single projection given by the equivalent of this 10-week offset, 48.4 to 55.3. Every single one, upside and downside. And would you like to see the results? I'm going to show them to you. Hold on. Hold on to your seats, folks. Show statistics, okay? So this is now included in these this uh, right-click menu for the web charts. Here they are. Wow. I mean, I can't tell you how surprised I was at this. I knew that these projections worked fabulously well. I wasn't going to tell anyone 75 or 80 uh, percent. But look at this. In the last 10 years, 41 projections given... 33 of them were met. That's 80.5%. So now Stefan has done more than that. He's broken it down. Okay? These are the ones that were invalidated and how many points they were missed by. These are the ones that were reached but he kept track of the adverse move against them before they were reached. For example, if we look at these projections way up here, and we go come back down here and say, ah, this is when the projection was given. What's the worst move against you? What if you had taken a position immediately based on this projection? And we do not necessarily recommend that. No one ever said you should take a position exactly when a projection is given, okay? But what if you had? What would be the maximum adverse reaction before that projection was met? And here you go. You can show it in points. This is in points. Or you can show it as a percent of the average trading range. ATR. Those of you, the huge trade station and other technical programs should be acquainted with that. Average trading range is simply 
um, very quick definition. It just gives you the average range each day of the high-low of the bar, except when there are gaps. If, when there's a gap, you start with the range of the close of the previous day rather than the, the high or the low. In other, so let's give you a quick example. Let's say today uh, the range is 100 to 101 on a stock, but yesterday it closed at 98. Well, we're not going to use 100 to 101 because if it closed at 98 yesterday, you use that as the low of the range and take into consideration the move today between 100 and 101. That's average true range in a nutshell. So it takes into consideration gaps that may be happening in between. That's both upside and downside. So this is average true range showing you percentage. Okay, here's another little goodie right here. 80.5% of projections met. The upside ones, 80%. The downside ones, 81%. Incredibly consistent in both directions. Now look at this little menu here. Consider the projections that were missed by a certain percentage of ATR, a 20 period average true range as reached. So if the average true range is, let's say 15 points for the day, and you miss by 20% 20, 20 of that average true range, which would be about three points, um, then you'd be included in the projection. So you can play around with it that way and watch what happens. Watch over here at the 80 and a half. I don't think it changes too much with this particular one, but watch what happens. We go to 10%, doesn't change it. 20% doesn't change it. You go to 30% of average true range, it brings up the completion, the success rate to 83%. You go to 40%, still 83%. But you can do that with each one of the projections and say, well, you know, I don't need to meet it exactly. What if it, came, what if it comes within so many points? Which, as you can see here, I mean, if you get within <laughs> 5 or 10 points of that projection and consider it made, then you can say that 83% of projections have been has been have been satisfied that way are you starting to get a feeling of how important this information is because you can't trade blindly in the market someone throws a offset at you and said oh look at this this is where we're going and you say well i don't know what how many times has that happened before okay so i ran a bunch of uh tests on this one of the other things i did was i tested the exact same offset with closing price projections. Shouldn't be that much different, and it wasn't. As a matter of fact, the closing price projections were 79.6%. Now, that's over the past 10 years. I said, well, let's go back even further. Let's be brave. Let's go back 20 years to around 2000, in fact, to exactly 2000, July of 2000, 20 years ago. How about percentages there? Well, guess what? The intraday projection success rate goes to 81.7. The closing price projection around the same. In fact, it is the same, 79.6. So over the last 10 years, over the last 20 years, this offset, the equivalent of 10-week offset, has been 80% successful in giving you price projections. If you don't think that's amazing, then you haven't been around the stock market too long, okay? So that's the reason we're doing this update, both for our very special own paying subscribers and for the sub people that watch through YouTube. They're subscribers there, but they subscribe for nothing. So they're only getting three or four updates a month. This was a very important one. This is what you can get your hands on, YouTubers. And if you're not impressed by those percentages, then you don't follow the stock market or you haven't followed it for very long. Okay, so I gave you the 20-year record. You're looking at the 10-year record that we looked at. Now, let's look at, uh, well, let's look at a 96.8 to 110.6 offset, okay? For the past 10 years. Here it is right here. The equivalent of a 20-week offset, okay? Nominal 40-week projection. And you're going to see two things of interest here. By the way, when you 
when you go back and remember there are very intense calculations being done now that's why you see this hourglass going back 10 years actually in this case uh, going back 20 years i think um but look look at this look at this let me move this forward so you can see where the low is here's the march 23rd low right here came up up to the <clears throat> the initial offset line came back down to the 200-day MA. We have just crossed the initial offset line, the 96.8 offset line, giving a preliminary upside projection. You're not going to believe this because I don't believe this, okay? Two. <laughs> 4, 4,150.08. Now, do you think we're getting up there? with the economic background that we're looking at. Now, some people might say, yeah, but look at the Federal Reserve background. Man, are they pumping money into this economy and this market? Okay, I don't pay attention to fundamentals. They reflect themselves in these charts. But this is a preliminary projection up to 4150, and we're going to show you on the weekly chart where it's not preliminary. It's given already, okay? But now the logical question becomes, all right, well, you showed us the 48.4 to 55.3 offsets and the projection success rate there. Do the same thing here, Mr. Magic Guy. And I'll say, okay, we will. Let's do that. So you click right here and say show statistics. Here you go. This is, okay, this is for intraday. 76.5% of the projections were met. Now, mind you, there weren't too many of them because we're talking about much longer offsets that are not crossed that often. Only 17 in the last 10 years. But 13 of those 17 reached their projections. Let's see if changing the ATR, the range, changes it at all. No, not significantly. You get, Once you get up to... Uh, 50%, 60% of the ATR, it increases it to 82%. And mind you, 60% of the average true range, again, if we're talking about a true range of maybe about 20 points, 60% uh, of that would be 12, 13, 14 points. That's not much. And if you say, we're going to meet that projection up here within 12, 15, even 20 or 30 points, that's pretty impressive. Okay. So while we're here, so you can show the workings, I can show you the workings and how this works. Let's take a quick look at closing price projections. And the way to do that is this. You simply go to Studies, Edit Studies. Now, as you can see here, I have both the closing one, the top one, and the median price, okay? So we looked at the median price. Let's look at the closing one. Closing one is here. Status is off. We'll turn it on. The median is here. Status on. We'll turn it off. And we'll run the very same thing. Let's make sure that we have... Those of you that are going to get this pretty soon, make sure that when you go to record statistics that it says true. The first time I tried this, it said false because you said it yourself. And I'm... Stefan, what did you do? I don't see any results here. Anyway, you have to go to the parameters here and set the record statistics to true. And you can set your average true range period. 20 days, 5 days, 20 days, 60 days. 20 days is like a month long. There are 21 days in an average month. So 20 covers about a month. And that's usually a pretty good one to use, okay? So now we click OK. Now we're going to get closing price. This is a closing chart. I should put closes on here to let you see it. Here's the closing price projection way up at 3487 minimum projection, okay? 3743, the higher side of it. Again, this goes back 10 years, okay? This is not a one-year, six-month study. 10 years going back. What is the accuracy rate of this offset, the equivalent of a 20-week offset? Okay, we go here. We go to show statistics. Here we go. Closing projection price statistics. 
10 years of history, okay, offset right up here, 48, 4, 55, 3, the equivalent of a 20-week offset, closing price projections, projection margin zero. In other words, you have to get within the projection range that was determined by coming through the continuum at anywhere between these offsets, okay? And a NIC filter period, which you will be able to adjust also, zero, okay? So, 79.6%. If, if you're a trader, if you know the markets, if you know anything about the history of the markets, you would look at this in awe and say, is that possible that you could use these offsets and come up with 80% accuracy of those projections? And the answer is, well, actually, the answer is before you. Uh, either you believe these statistics or you don't, but <laughs> here they are, okay? And, and look at this. Upside projections, 21 out of 24, 87.5%, almost a 90% success record. The downsides were not anywhere nearly as good, but they were still about three out of four of the downside projections were met, okay? So that's what we're looking at. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is going to be a weekly projection chart. This weekly projection chart is going to blow your socks off because, again, I, <laughs> you know, when we got projections, we were way back here in April, May, we started to get projections up to the levels we've been reaching, and it, it was incredible at the time because all of you know where we stood with COVID-19 and what was going on with a world economy that for all practical purposes was closed the economy of the world was closed, and we started getting higher projections down here. Now look at this one. <laughs> what? So I'm going to say the same thing here that I said down here when we were getting projections up to around here. There's no way on God's green earth that I see the market going up here. 39.55 to 43.47. Okay, not with the kind of background that we have, not with the overvalued position that we're in right now to begin with. Okay, but this is a projection. Remember, we showed you this on the daily chart. It had not yet been confirmed, and there was a big continuum on the daily chart that said, hey, you're not confirmed yet, so just wait. But this is the weekly projection chart, and it is confirmed here. Now, you could have a big decline in the next week or so, come down here and maybe cross above it at a lower level and give perhaps a more realistic projection. But I wanted you to see this and see what we're looking at in terms of possibilities in the market. Again, this to me is almost inconceivable. But, but as I keep repeating, I, I, I trust the projections more than I trust my own intuition. And I think I have a pretty good market intuition. Been around for 50 years or more, folks, okay? So this is just incredible, and I wanted you to see it. That's about it. We're so excited about being able to bring up these statistics now. Those of you that are subscribers now on our website, you're going to have this in your hands within a couple of weeks at the most. Those of you that are watching on YouTube, you will have the ability to have this in your hands if you become subscribers. StockMarketCycles.com. We will put a link down below the YouTube video today to show you how you can get to our registration page in order to subscribe just to the videos, just to the software, both of them in a di nicely discounted bundle. Okay? And... Uh, that's where we are on a crazy, crazy weekend. Sunday, July 19th, showing you the market through July 17th. Have yourselves, uh, have yourselves a great week coming up, and things are going to get very interesting from this point on. Thank you for watching.